The answer to the Israeli-Palestinian puzzle might lie in these pages, where Arab and Jewish children who never meet in person get to know each other only through the written word. So usually they are not named. They are called Arabs or Israel's Arabs, which is a racist uh, label. Uh, and then they're represented as uh, primitive farmers and nomads, all, always with a kafia, with a camel, and with some kind of Alibaba dress that nobody really wears in, in, in racist caricatures. And of course, uh, as terrorists. But it's not much better in the Palestinian textbooks. The stereotypes here are also pretty alarming. The Israeli Jews are, uh, are, are invaders from Europe. They have nothing to do with this land. They are basically uh, criminals, and uh, therefore uh, they are educated for a long-term war against them. Much of the problem stems from the fact that in Israel, Jews and Arabs go to different schools. They study a different curriculum and sit different exams. What's more, because Jewish schools are generally better funded, their standard of education is higher. But here is one school trying to get it right. It is part of the Oasis for Peace village with an equal number of both Jewish and Arab learners. Aside from being an example of how both sides can learn together, the most important lesson being taught here is understanding each other. It's the first school of its kind in the country and receives no funding from the government. In every classroom there's an Israeli and Palestinian teacher and every lesson is taught in both Hebrew and Arabic. Sometimes there is tension, maybe according to what is going, going out around. If there is uh, some uh, terror attacks or a war, the war in Gaza or some... They are coming from home with all kinds of uh, ideas and, uh, and they are talking about it. A particularly difficult lesson these teachers are preparing for is Israel's Independence Day. Because while for Israelis it's a national holiday, for Palestinians it's a catastrophe. When the two teachers are standing in front of the children, the children are tense, and there's sometimes, they just, it's like I'm here and I'm not here. And we assure them it's okay to speak about it. It's not something bad. This is history and we're supposed to speak about what happened and look for the future together. But the challenge is big and the school uses Israeli textbooks which it has translated into Arabic. There are sections that talk about a so-called Palestinian demographic nightmare, and there are maps that ignore each other's existence. What these books do, especially history books, they teach the children not historical discourse. This is not the discourse of historians. They teach them the discourse of politicians and generals. And so, until a different story is written and taught, the lessons most Israelis and Palestinian children take into their future fall dismally short of a real education for peace. Paulus Lea RT, Latrun.